Bonjour, bonjour, and welcome to lesson five. Lesson five already. I hope you're ready. And let's see what you're going to look at today. We're going to start with the notion of masculine and feminine, then how to say a and the. And finally, we're going to look at adjective agreements. Now, it sounds very complex. It's true. It's quite technical. But don't worry. I will make it very easy for you. Uh, the concepts of masculine and feminine are, and adjective agreements to a certain extent is something that we really need to look at because it affects the whole of the French language. So let's get started. Now, today we're going to talk about nouns. What are nouns? Nouns are the words we use to refer to places, for example, France, country, to people, father, sister, these are all nouns, to objects, pen, bag, car, or even to abstract concept, beauty, uh, intelligence, things like that. All of these are nouns. Now, one of the slightly tricky things in French is that nouns can be masculine, like this switch up here, but they can also be feminine. But it's not up to you. It's a trace from uh, Latin, and it's common to all languages that derive from Latin. Nouns in French or in Spanish or in Italian have got to be one or the other, either masculine or feminine. Now, when it's a person, when we're talking about a person, it's quite easy. You just follow the traditional gender of the person. If we're talking about father, father traditionally is a male. So the, the word or non father in French, pair, is masculine. Sir, sister, is traditionally uh, female, so sir is feminine. So nouns have to be masculine or feminine. Here is an example: the word for voiture, the word sorry, the word for car, voiture, is feminine. But the word for for bag, sac, is masculine. So they've got to be one or the other, and it's not up to you. It's intrinsic to the language. So that raises quite a few questions, I'm sure. And one of the first questions that's going to arise in your mind is, why is it important to know which nouns are masculine and which are feminine? So you may say to me, OK, I understand that in French there are masculine nouns and feminine nouns. But does it really matter? What if I just make a mistake? Well, it's not life-threatening. Obviously, you'll be forgiven if you make a mistake. However, if you want to learn French properly, yes, it does matter. And this is why. Nouns, remember, we're talking about words we use in a sentence that refer to places, people, objects, or concepts. These nouns, when they're applied into a sentence, they are like the chief of the sentence. They're like we kings and queens. They direct everything that's going to happen in the sentence. So, for example, here is a noun that is a masculine noun. Uh, you've got an example. We, you remember we talked about bag, sack, which a bag, which is a masculine noun. So if I want to use a or the with a masculine noun, that masculine noun will only take a masculine version for a or the. No way is it going to use a feminine version. It's got to be a specifically masculine version. So to say a bag or the bag, I will have to use the form of a or the that is masculine. Same thing with adjectives, words that describe 
a noun. So if I want to add a wee bit to my bag and say a blue bag or a beautiful bag, blue or beautiful are adjectives. They're adding a piece of information about the bag. This adjective will have also to follow suit with the noun. If the noun is masculine, I will need to use the masculine form of the adjective. Now, if a noun is feminine, the same thing happens. If I want to say a or the with a feminine noun, here we have voiture, car. If I want to say a car or the car, I can only use the feminine version of a and the because car, voiture, is feminine in French. And if I want to add an adjective to it, a uh, fast car, I can only use the feminine version of that adjective because the noun is feminine. So this is how much it affects the sentence that you use. The second uh, question is, how do we know which nouns are masculine and which are feminine? Now, with people, it's very straightforward because we just follow the gender. So the word père, father, traditionally male, therefore masculine. The word uh, mère for mother, traditionally feminine uh, and feminine, obviously. So uh, that's fine for people, but when you're talking about an object or a concept, how do you know if it's masculine or feminine? Because you can't apply genders anymore. Now, uh, the best way is really to learn, every time you learn a new word, to learn whether that word is masculine or feminine. However, there is a trick that you can use, but just beware because it doesn't work all of the time. It works about 80% of the time, but still, that's not bad. So here is the trick. If the French word ends with the letter I, such as voiture, voiture, the letters Shun, or the sound, I should say, the sound shun, such as addition, 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 or other versions of that, sion with double S I O N, discussion, addition, discussion, addition, discussion, or even son, maison, house, then these words tend to be feminine. Anything else is masculine. And by the way, you will have noticed that words that end in shun, whether it's T-I-O-N or double S-I-O-N, or even one S-I-O-N, in English tend to be the same in French. So you've got a whole lot of vocabulary added up to your list uh, straight away. So for example, addis addition, addition, discussion, discussion, Ambition, ambition, distraction, distraction, version, version. So a whole lot of new words that you can have at your disposal here. But anyway, going back to this rule, if it ends, if the word, the French word ends in E, shun, whether it's T-I-O-N, double S-I-O-N or S-I-O-N or son, S-O-N, these words tend to be feminine. Anything else is feminine. So your turn is going to be your turn. And before you mo move on to the activity, you may want to take a note of the rule that you've just seen before you tackle this activity. So anyway, your turn, à vous. Uh, you're going to see a nice wee scene with a basket and there's going to be nouns coming out of the basket. Uh, for every noun that comes out, you're going to have to say if they are masculine or feminine. Now, be careful because if they refer to people, remember you follow the gender of the person, not the ending.
compétition, compétition, féminine, règle, rouleur, féminine, pays, country, Masculine. Sœur, sister. Be careful, it's a person. Féminine. Père, father. Again, it's a person. Masculine. Stylo, pen. Masculine. Maison, house. Féminine. Percussion. Féminine. Crayon. Pencil. Masculine. Table. I don't say I need to tell you what that is. Féminine. Panier. Basket. Masculine. Sofa. Masculine. Okay, now we're moving on to saying a or the. Remember, we said earlier on that we need to have two forms for each of them, a masculine and a feminine for a, and a masculine and feminine for the. So let's look at how that works. So here is a masculine non in the middle here. And we have an example with our bag, sack, which we know is masculine. So if I want to say a, bag, I will need to use the masculine form of A, which is un. Un is the same as number one. When we did the numbers, you already knew that one from there. Un. But if I want to say the bag, it's le. Le sac. Un sac, le sac. If I'm talking about a feminine word, like voiture, I can only use feminine attributes with it. So if I want to say a car, it's not un anymore, it's une, une voiture. If I want to say the car, it's la, la voiture, une voiture, la voiture. So here is the rule. And again, you may want to take a note of that rule somewhere that you keep safe. So here are the different forms of a and the. A masculine is un, but a feminine is une. The masculine is le, but the feminine is la. Now, let's do some practice. Uh, you've got to help this Egyptian man carry the right stone. You're going to look at words appearing on the papyrus and you have to write the correct form. Now, don't worry, we're going to do the first one together, so it's going to be very, very clear as to what you've got to do. So here is our Egyptian man. And the word we've got coming out is panier, panier, basket, and we want to use it with the. 
So first of all, you look at the word panier, basket. It's not a person. Therefore, I'm going to look at the ending. Well, it doesn't end in E or shun or sion or son, any of the feminine endings. So we can assume that it's masculine. Now, let's find the masculine version for the, and it's le. So that would give you le panier in order to say the basket. Okay, if you're ready, you're going to do the following ones by yourself. Voiture, car, and you've got to use it with a. Une voiture. Porte, which is door, and you've got to use it with the, the door. La porte. Tomate. We had that one earlier on. Tomato. And you've got to use it with A. A tomato. Une tomate. Avion, which is plain. And you've got to say A plain. Un avion, un avion. Orange, which is an orange, and you've got to use it with the. L'orange. Now I'll pause on that one a wee bit uh, because um, orange, you will probably have noticed, ends with an E. So it is feminine, indeed it is feminine, but what uh, comes through is because it starts with a vowel, O, then le or la automatically become L apostrophe in front of a vowel or a letter H, which is silent in French. So that's why you've got L apostrophe. But if you've written la, then you've got the, the right principle be behind all of that. So, l'orange. Fille, which is daughter or girl. You've got to use it with a. A girl, a daughter. Une fille. Now, you have to be careful here. It's a person. Père. Father, and you've got to use it with the. Le père. Television, which is of course television, and you've got to use it with the, the television. La television. Sir, which is sister, and you've got to use it with A. Une sœur. Okay, now moving on to making things plural. So we know that we've got in French masculine and feminine nouns, and that is fine. But uh, as much as it's not up to you whether a noun is masculine or feminine, what is up to you is whether you're talking about one item, one place, one person, one object, or you're talking about more than one. Plural. So you may want to talk about more than one. Whether they are masculine or feminine doesn't matter. Okay? And you may want to talk about uh, a car or cars. You may want to talk a bag or bags. So what happens when you talk about more than one item? Well, exactly the same as what happens in English. You simply add an S at the end of the noun. You do exactly the same in English. But of course, that's again going to affect the wee words around it. So if you want to say some, 
some bags, you would say des, des sacs, some cars, des voitures. If you want to say the bags, then you would say les sacs, the cars, les voiture. As you'll notice here, it doesn't matter whether the noun is masculine or feminine. The plural form can apply to either of them. But that's going to be the same with adjectives. So we know that if I want to say some or the, it's de or le. Des sacs, some bags. Des voitures, some cars. Les sacs, the bags. Les voitures, the cars. But if I want to add an adjective as well, if I want to say the blue bags, the fast cars, well, that adjective will have to follow suit. Remember I said that nouns were like we dictators, we kings over the sentence. They rule over whatever word happens to be around them. So adjectives may be one of them. And what happens when you want to describe that non plural non with an adjective? Then you add an S as well. Okay, it follows suit. Any word around our non is going to follow exactly what the non does. So your turn. Uh, this merchant is learning French. You've got to help him select the correct form of the adjective. So here he is and is wondering whether you would say une lampe. Would it be Egyptian, masculine? Egyptian, masculine plural with an S. Egyptienne, feminine. Or Egyptienne, ES, feminine and plural. So you've got to look, look at une lampe. First of all, eliminate whether it's masculine or feminine okay lamp ends with an e it's feminine so we can eliminate the first two egyptian and egyptian with an s so we're faced with the last two egyptian or egyptian with an s to determine it, which one it is we look at whether we're talking about one item or more than one singular or plural well, here it's une lampe, there's only one. So the correct version is une lampe égyptienne. Une lampe égyptienne. So if you're ready, it's your turn. Un vin française, française ou français. Un vin français. Des pâtes italien, italien with an S, italienne or italienne with an S. Des pâtes italiennes. I will point out here that when you look at the word, obviously if it's a plural word, it's going to have an S at the end. So if you want to work out whether it's masculine or feminine, you've got to go just before the S because the S marks the plural. But it may uh, cause you to make a mistake if you're looking at this S as the last letter. The last letter here is actually the E that comes before the S. That's the one that's going to tell you it's feminine. So watch out for that. The sombrero. Is it Mexican, Mexican with an S, Mexican or Mexican with an S? Des sombreros Mexicains. Des lanternes. So is it des lanternes chinois, chinoise or chinoise with an S? Des lanternes chinoises. Un éventail, un éventail, is it un éventail espagnol, espagnol with an S, espagnol with an I, ou espagnol with IS. Un éventail espagnol. Des tasses, cups, 
so is it des tasses anglais, anglaise, or anglaise with an S? Des tasses anglaise. Une bière. Is it une bière allemand? Allemand with an S? Allemande or allemande with an S? Une bière allemande. So, uh, des sirops d'érable. Is it des sirops d'érable canadiens? Canadian with an S, Canadian or Canadian with an S. I'll give you a bit of a clue here, a bit of help, I suppose, because when you look at the sirop d'érable, érable is an adjective, syrups from the érable tree. So the one you're really looking at is sirop, not érable. Ignore érable, you're looking at sirop. So is it des sirops d'érable Canadian, Canadian with an S? Canadienne or Canadienne with ES. Des sirops d'érable canadien. OK, c'est tout pour aujourd'hui. And next time, we're going to look at asking someone where they live, saying where you live, numbers up to 60, and that's going to be us. And don't forget to check the French Ignition website because we organize conversation groups. And if there isn't yet one near you, just let us know and we'll see if we can set one up. Okay, au revoir et à la prochaine.